Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! My name is Twitchy, and last time we had a Bob Kerman hanging onto a ladder on the side of a rocket that was hopping around the whole of Minmus so that we could come back with over a thousand points of science. This time we need to make use of those technologies that we have opened up, and we are taking a mobile processing lab to our Kerbin Space Station. Once again, my name is Twitchy, and welcome to my final career. We start as always in the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building. Building of wonders and the ability to just magic in the copy of the space station that we have in orbit. The reason that I brought this up is we want to put the mobile processing lab underneath it somewhere and I thought this would be the best way to have a look at what we're doing. And the thing that I am trying to do is attach a docking port, the new docking port, to the side of this mobile processing lab. Unfortunately, the way that I've gone about doing it isn't going to work. So we're going to start with the mobile processing lab and I've decided that maybe that docking port just there isn't the way that we want to do it. Maybe we want to have some other radial attachment parts. So I'm going to go through and see what I can attach radially. I did find the cubic octagonal strut. Uh, it's my go-to part, but I thought, hey, it's my go-to part. Let's try something else. So we've gone for the FTL, is that 400? It's a liquid fueled tank anyway. And from that, I can build some structure and put some controls on the top of it. So this thing can fly when it is in space. We've put some communication arrays on it and are gone for my classic sloped end. I think it's looking really cool. And I'm trying to figure out which way we want to lift this. I could lift it this way around, but I, we've got an unsymmetrical profile in that case, uh, at which point all the drag would be applied to the command nodule there, I'm going to call it, thus trying to induce a roll, and it would become harder to fly like that. Giving it a slightly less generic name, I'll go and make a save, and let's try and figure out how we're going to actually get this in orbit. As I said, the drag is going to be quite extreme, so let's see if we can put a fairing around it. Unfortunately, the fairing does not go large enough so we're just gonna have to try and launch it in the orientation that gives us a symmetrical drag around all the axes and this is the one that we're gonna go with having started with the science module as the root part and then swapping it over to the probodyne up top I knew we were gonna have some troubles with orientation and symmetry here I did a another quick change of root part and I could see that maybe we were getting close so I swiveled around uh, the the everything apart from the control point the probe core uh, and managed to get a good layer of symmetry on the way there. Having a look over at the, um, the amount of delta V that we have available to us, 2,500, two and a half kilometers per second that we can change our speed by. That's pretty good. That's not quite up to orbit though. It's maybe a third of the way. We need 3,500 delta Vs. I throw an extra tank on top and we're still very, very close. One more tank gets us there. Thankfully, the bore boosters that are underneath, I think that's what they're called, have the to weight ratio to lift pretty much double what we're doing here so that's nice and sound we've got some fins on the outside just to control us through some of the layers of the atmosphere and some boosters for that starting to weight ratio to get us off the pad and moving with a little bit of haste i uh, suddenly have a concern for reusability and decide that i'm going to put some some parachutes on the side and then explain my parachute placement by the medium of moving the craft around and showing how i think the aerodynamics are going to affect it Talking of aerodynamics, we need some nose cones for these solid boosters on the side here. And if I was really smart, I could have also covered up the docking ports to reduce drag even further. I didn't think about it at the time, but what I did think about was a little bit of what this looked like. So I went around and changed some of the end adapters to the orange type rather than the white. No real reason for that other than look. Drain all the fuel out of the central stage so that we are lifting an incredibly light stage. And I noticed that the space station is ahead of us rather than behind us in the orbit, but I think this is fine. Fire everything up, forget the throttle, turn that up and let's get going. We're going at a fair pace here. Two and a half, maybe even a three Gs on the acceleration. We're making our way up to 10 kilometers pretty quickly. And uh, as seems to be the way recently, I am not turning in my gravity turn as hard as I would like to. For some reason, staging the solid boosters away spun us out. I, I don't know what actually happened there. Normally when that happens, it's because we are passing through the speed of sound about 300 meters per second. It's no real big problem though. I just let this craft spin 
around until it's pointed in the right direction. We've already got an Apple Apps height of 86 kilometers, so we are going to space today. And if I can get out of the atmosphere to where we have no drag on the craft whatsoever, we can use the SAS to point us in the right direction. That is exactly what we do here. We are pushing on hard and we are pushing fast on our way up to orbit here. The thing I'm trying to remember to do is to set my orbit really low. As the space station is ahead of us in the orbit, I need to make sure that we have a smaller orbit so we can go around it quicker and get to the other side before it does. Time Warp takes us up to the Apple Apps and from there we can circularize with the minimal of effort, trying to get my Parry Apps literally just above the atmosphere. At 70 kilometers and 611 meters, I managed to do exactly that. We do now have the slight problem where we are slowly catching up with the craft ahead of us, but we don't have any intercept markers to tell us where we need to go. So I'm going to bust out a bit of a maneuver node here and maybe actually swing it round to my Parry Apps, pushing my Apple Apps just up and beyond the line of the space station's orbit so that I get that little orange triangle and know which way we are going, how close we're going to be to the next approach. I need to go around to Parry Apps and do that, but I have just noticed that we are actually running out of electric charge, or rather I am facing the wrong way so my solar panels are not receiving enough charge. I turn on the hibernate option for my probodynes because that's a great way of saving electricity. Right now we're trying to turn ourselves around to face the direction of the maneuver node. It's not a big problem, but as the only SES that we have is on the probodynes, it does take us a little bit of time. So much so that I end up chasing around the maneuver marker there, but it's not, it's not a big problem. We end up doing the maneuver that we need to do imparting a little bit of spin to our craft which through the wonders of the persistent rotation mod we get to watch throughout the time warp. Using the next orbit button on the maneuver nodes I find out that we need four orbits before we are in anywhere near a close proximity to the station core. I'm going to take that. I think that's good enough. Four orbits time we're going to do a very small maneuver which ends up putting us within 10 kilometers of the space station core and as I want to be facing my maneuver node I go around to the sunlit side so we have some power and then I press T to put the SAS on so we can can stop this rotation but for some reason though the craft does not want to slow itself down the SAS button is on it's showing that it is trying to slow itself down but at no point during the process does it slow down so I've got to turn physics warp off and uh, manually take control to slow it back down before I can point myself upwards towards my maneuver node this is a pretty slow process as this craft is pretty heavy and it's only got the SAS inside the probe dies to point it up so we'll take a moment to have a look at the Sun in the background there and that dot is jewel I'd like to complain because Jewel is on the other side of the sun, not this side. We shouldn't be able to see it. Anyway, there's my complaint and we are starting to look up to the north. I pull out the Kerbal Engineer because with the persistent rotation mod, I want to make sure we're going slow enough that when I time warp, we do not continue spinning around. I want to be looking at the maneuver node placement and that is exactly what we've got here. Pushing forwards four orbits. I just hit the go to next maneuver node button on the side of the actual maneuver node indicator there and we find ourselves pointed in the right place at the right time. For some reason, one of my fuel indicators on the left-hand side is showing us without fuel, but I went through and checked everything. There is fuel in that tank. We are fine. One second left on the burn to do. We're done. All right, cool. We are now next orbit going to be within 10 kilometers of the station. I'm a little bit worried that maybe, that maybe, we are not looking towards the sun when we get round there, but I, I feel like this is something that we can deal with. Navball goes crazy as we time warp our way into the future. I don't mind having a little bit of rotation still in my craft because it means that I can use that inertia to carry on looking the way that I actually want to end up be, uh, looking as opposed to if I was at a full stop and it would take me a while to try and turn to look towards where I need to be. Which of course is facing the target retrograde marker. I need to slow down relative to my target so that we can rendezvous at a slow, gentle pace. I don't want to be crashing into my target at 20 meters per second. I don't want to be crashing into it at hundreds meters per second. We want to just be rolling in as slow as possible. Now we have a rather interesting situation here where I am trying to point myself in the right direction to slow down perfectly. Unfortunately, we are running out of time and every time that I try and push myself around using the power of my engines, I of course move my target marker. So I think ahead and I'm going, okay, what we're going to do instead is trying to push that target marker on top of the pink marker and that way the two will match up. Take a moment to use the chase camera view here so that we can actually see how fast our craft is spinning. I find that that gives a much more accurate 
accurate representation than trying to watch from the outside here, which looks like we're not spinning very fast at all, but actually, but actually we are moving. 10 kilometers off in the distance, I can see the space station, but unfortunately it means we're gonna take a long time to drift over in that direction because we're only moving at 10 meters per second relative to it. And because of the nature of orbits, when we move around, they're gonna be moving around at a slightly different pace. And if you think about two circles, we're gonna end up definitely different directions from each other. So actually I want to get my target marker to be pointed towards them and then travel faster. Unfortunately, with the lack of SAS power, I need to use my engines to point round in that direction. And as I do that, I change the predicted direction that I'm going to be traveling, pushing me further away from where I want to be. This is all a bit of a runaway bad effect here, but if I can get myself facing in the right direction, we can overcome this with a much higher thrust from our engines. And indeed, whilst I've been explaining that entire process, that is exactly what I went ahead and did. You can see we are now traveling towards our target at about 25 meters per second, doing my best to continue traveling in that rough direction, but also spinning myself around so that when we get closer, when time has passed it that we can drift, I can then slow ourselves down like so. Okay, we are pretty much stationary next to the target and I want to decouple all of these boosters. There is a problem, there is a big problem. We have no batteries on this center module here. We're out of electric charge. We have no control. I'm gonna have to revert this. 38 days, one hour and 15 minutes, and they send me this plan. Have mission control lost their minds? Do they even know what it is to be out here? First they send me up the gravity well, and now they want me to go back without even the fuel to finish this trajectory that they sent me. Luckily, I have a man on the inside. He says he can get me something to Juno. I only hope I can get there before they notice. This is Jebediah Kerman, High Commander of the Abandoned Space Fleet, the People's Space Fleet, signing off. So we know the troubles that plague us. We throw down some solar panels to give us energy for the central core, and I also go about hiding some SAS in the boosters so that we can actually turn around and look at stuff. The next thing, just for a little bit of extra swag, go ahead and wait for the station to be just above the desert so that we can actually do a, a direct rendezvous rather than having to go around in the orbit first. And whilst we watch the science module, take the mission profile that we should have done the first time, waiting for that station to be in the correct position really does does make the job a lot easier. I am going to take a moment right here to thank every single one of my patrons. These are the guys and girls that keep me focused and on track. When my friends come to me and say, Twitchy, would you like to go scuba diving off the Antarctic coast? There is a hidden continent underneath all that ice and we have a theory that maybe there are some secret hidden civilizations there. All we need to do is take our travel cutlery, go down under the ice, breathing through small reeds made out of whatever local materials we can find and chip away until we can find the remains and I'm gonna have to say no I can't do that because I need to make these videos these videos that entertain the masses out on the internet but more importantly these wonderful wonderful people that make donations to my course I'm headed off to university next week to get my astrophysics degree and these monthly donations really help take a lot of the stress out of the process so I hope you will join me in thanking from the very bottom of my heart this list of people right here through the magic of the director ascent and rendezvous, we are five kilometers away from our target and we have a periaps 35 kilometers underneath the surface of Kerbin. That's okay though, because we are drifting very close towards the station over here. And once we nullify our relative velocity, we'll be in the same circular orbit as it. So no problem, we decouple, all the systems work, praise everything that is out there, mostly the Kraken though. And we are gonna move forward towards this station on mostly the power of RCS. So all I do is push forwards and I'm looking at my nav ball for almost all of this. Whilst I can see what's going on up above, I know that I need to drift forwards and beyond my target. My target is the pink circle on the nav ball and of course the direction I'm traveling is the yellow ball. My target is the docking port on the far side of the station. I always think of it as the bottom edge, so we're gonna go with that name and culture at the moment. Drifting towards it, I've made sure that my prograde marker and my target marker are not exactly overlapping because I want to drift past, as I say, just like this, so that we can then nullify our speeds once more and turn to face my actual target, which is the docking port at the end there. Once you're within this range of your target, docking should be a very slow and gentle process. 
process. You turn around and look where you're supposed to be going, make small, gentle movements with your RCS to try and bring yourself into correct alignment and then push very gently towards. Unfortunately, for some reason, I've forgotten all of that and I've gone and done some weird button presses trying to spin myself around. What would actually have made this a lot better is if I had used the locked camera mode and I'm just about to switch into it now. In fact, I already had. Uh, and this then gives me a better sense of orientation. I feel the main problem with that last docking attempt was the fact that I didn't really know which way I was facing when I was trying to uh, push myself up or forwards, or at least the relative orientation of my two docking ports at the end there. But now that I am sure that I'm facing in the right direction and everything is good, it takes a very little effort to bring these two craft together. That's the contract complete, and of course we can take a little moment here just to make a few things nicer, use the docking port alignment tool to bring these guys perfectly into alignment with each other, but that is not the only thing we brought up here. There are, of course, two boosters out there that we need to deal with. We can't be leaving space junk up in the orbit. That is not the sign of a space program that cares about the future reusability of its own orbital paths. The first thing I do when I take control of the boosters is, of course, turn the probe onto hibernation mode. I've got direct control of it, it doesn't need to be burning our very little amount of electric charge that we have here. In fact, there is so little electric charge that I very nearly run out just trying to point it in the direction uh, to decelerate. I just burn up all the fuel that I feel like it needs to bring it down into a deorbit, and I'd really like to keep a little bit on board just so that I can burn up for some electricity if I really needed to. But honestly, I didn't think we needed to, I was just going to see how this thing behaved. It has of course got two fins on the bottom, but only on one edge. So this has led to a little bit of a roll here. If it was a little bit shorter, it would have, could have actually provided a bit of stability, I think. You, you never know with these things. You, you build some general ideas when you're playing Kerbal, and then you go and put them into practice, and it all goes wrong. Anyway, the drogue chutes came out. They slowed us down just enough for the actual parachutes to come out. What's also always one of the problems with such aerodynamic designs that you can be coming down so fast that your parachutes fail to open. It's the only time I put a drogue chute on, and we've lost half the vehicle. No big problem. We've cleared out the orbital lane. That's kind of the important part. Second booster coming down. As you can see, we've got a little bit more electric in this one, and we can totally take control and fly this thing aerodynamically until we couldn't anyway. And with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys the next time where we're going to launch a probe to Moho. But I have to temper your expectations because it takes a long time to get to Moho. So we're also going to launch a moon station and a Minma station to help out with our tourism program. I'm going to quickly draw your attention back to the background and tell you how close we were to the Kerbal Space Center. And with that, I've been Twitchy. Bye!